Dip 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 dooty dow but do be do ba da da dip 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 dooty dow but do be do ba da da dip 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 dooty dow but do be do ba da da dip 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 dooty dow but do be do ba da da dip 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 dooty dow but do be do ba da da dip 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 dooty dow but do be do ba da da dip 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 dooty dow but do be do ba da da We're here at the 63rd annual Lake Forest Car Show. We're doing this together, the Lake Forest Lake Bluff Rotary Club, as well as the Illinois Region AACA. It's an effort that's been put on by the Illinois Region of AACA since 1948, when the first car on the field, or the newest car on the field, was a 1928. Today we have cars on the field that are 25 years and older, taking us to the uh, 1985 cars are out here. Those are considered antiques. We have a beautiful day here and we have some beautiful, beautiful cars. Uh, just behind me uh, today in the spotlight tent right now is a green Biscayne Chevrolet concept car. I'm not sure if uh, they can see that behind me there. It's a one of cars that General Motors made as a test car for the Corvairs that came out a little bit later. Uh, you won't see that anywhere else. We also have some other unusual and beautiful cars on this field. We have a, a number of cars that, again, would be qualified for Pebble Pe Beach showing. And uh, we hope that you do come out and see the show. It's a great time for all. And again, we have absolutely beautiful weather. Thanks. We're here with Bill Grahams from Volo uh, Auto Museum out in Volo. And uh, is this your first time here, Bill? No, I've been here for many years. Actually, I was president of the Illinois region for two terms, so that would make me uh, an old survivor. <laughs> That's great. And Bill's got a very unusual vehicle with him, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, just to mention, they're having a picnic in the park at the Volo Auto Museum August 21st. So if this is on cable before then, it's a free event. Come on out and uh, see some great cars and have a free picnic. With the cars. It's, uh, it's an invitation to all pre-1950 cars. And all the participants get in. We're going to have a big buffet over at the brand new lodge. And there is a, uh, a grand dinner. And there will be good food, good drink, and good music. And a lot of fun. And our, our new trolley ride, that goes, it's going to be going around. It sounds like a winner, August 21st. We've got a 1914 trolley that's restored uh, from uh, San Francisco. Let's talk about your, uh, your little, if we could. We're going to ask you to come out and sure. give us a description of it. Well, I, I, uh, I don't know an awful lot about it. As you know, we have 300 cars at the museum, and this is one of them. Uh, the fellows over here asked me to bring it down because they know it's the forerunner to Chevrolet, and I believe uh, uh, Durant had a, a hand in it, and uh, Louis Chevrolet and some other people, they got together, and uh, the first car they built was called The Little, and that's what this is, and they decided they needed to change the name, so they come up with Chevrolet, and thus... Chevrolet, General Motors, one of the big three today. That's funny. I always thought Chevrolet was a family name that uh, was attached to vehicles built by some guy named Chevrolet, but I guess I was wrong. This is 1912. Yes, sir. 1912. <clears throat> There's very few of these that existed. Uh, it was in remarkably good uh, restore, unrestored condition. I believe, uh, if I, I might stand corrected, but I believe there's a gentleman that's a friend of mine by the name of Biff Beer out of Downers Grove, I believe he owns a printing shop out there, and I think he restored the car probably around 12 years ago. And then it went to, uh, came to the museum. We sold it to uh, Mr. Bob Yonker, who has a uh, residence in, uh, in Milwaukee, and he brought the car back over for us to have for the show, and uh, it is available, you know. And uh, uh, about three months ago, it's been on display at, uh, at the museum ever since. And that's great. That's what you guys do is, is take cars like this, uh, great vintage, great value, great uh, interest, and they're available for sale and also for viewing at the museum. Well, the, the big key factor here is we sell about 80 a month, and it keeps the, the, con, the museum changing sure. constantly. So if you come there this month, next month, the following month, you're going to see a couple hundred different cars all the time. I love the yellow tires on this, too. That's great. Yeah. I can have your yeah, attention. We, we scrubbed just them, but the they're... food tent is now ready. We've got hamburgers. That's, that's even more work than white walls. Hot dogs available. 
Yeah, we, well we scrubbed them the nice best we could, beer. but uh, so uh, once the they're, tent, you know, a dozen years old lunch. or so, they start We also want to remind yellow. everybody again well, We appreciate your time, Bill. Thanks for coming to the show. And the sponsorship Thank you. of the People's Choice. We're at the uh, Spotlight Tent right now. This is one of the great features of the, uh, the show where uh, owners get up to tell about their vehicles, and there's a crowd that listens and learns about these classic, classic cars that appear each year at the, uh, at the Antique Auto Show here in Lake Forest. And uh, this is a great way, as I said, to learn some of the history of, of these vehicles. This is, uh, what, Austin, uh, Healy, uh, Triumph, uh, what is that? Uh, we've got here a 1951 Chevrolet Deluxe Convertible owned by Jerry Offox of uh, Highland Park. Jerry's not around that right now, but uh, it's a, this is the way the car should be displayed, I think. The engine compartment's open. You can see the, uh, the quality of the work and restoration that's been done there. Either that has been kept very clean over these past uh, 60 years, and I sort of doubt that. But... Um, Great looking car. Um, convertible tops up though, keep the, uh, the sun out. Um, this is kind of the fun thing. Look at the size of those white walls too. It's, that's something. And we've got here a town and country. This is Chrysler, not Chevrolet. Another convertible. Uh, this is uh, Jerry Elbin from Deerfield, 1948. A town and country convertible. Nice shape. This is a 1948 Chevrolet Fleetline Aero Sedan. Aero Sedan. Uh, complete with a set of golf clubs in the front. Uh, this is in great shape. Again, the uh, engine compartment's open. We can see what's under the hood. Uh, it's a Woody, and those are great. This is a, so 1948 Chevrolet Aero Sedan, and it has a country club kit on it, which is a rare 
dealer installed option. Uh, to, to, know, uh, to date, there's only about 15 known to still exist. Is this car originally from around here, or did you bring it in from somewhere else? The car came from uh, St. Paul area. And uh, I've had it about eight, nine years now, and little by little, uh, up until the present, it's pretty much been completed within the last few months. We appreciate you bringing it out to the show. This looks great. Thank you very much. Did you drive it out? I did. It runs great. <laughs> we got lots of stuff. people gawking on the... People like wood. <laughs> Is there difficulty with keeping the wood up? To, I mean, does it shrink? Does it squeak? Does it problem uh, with that? This one is applied over the sheet metal because it was a dealer-installed option. Uh, I have a 48 Chevy as well, a woody station wagon, which is part of the construction is the actual wood. So it does. It's The varnish squeaks and creaks and rattles, and you can hardly hear yourself think as you're going down the road. All right, we're here now with Rotary and Terry Desmond, who for years has been running this uh, People's Choice Award thing for the, the club. And what this is, uh, as you go through the show, you see a favorite car in the show. You remember the number. Each car's got a little placard with a number on his windshield. You come back here and you vote, and if that car has most votes, it wins a nice trophy. Terry, anything I've mentioned? Uh, you've hit it right on the spot, Chuck, uh, but we use the latest uh, voting equipment. Uh, the voters will use actual ballots voting in the voting booth. They'll insert their ballot into the tabulator. It's immediately uh, tabulated, added to the count, and at the end of the night, we'll send a card through and get the final results immediately. And so this is what we use in uh, everyday elections. So uh, we're state of the art, and we appreciate the last detail for sponsoring this. And uh, we have a voter coming right now. Oh, here. Get to see how, how it goes. Hi. You want to get it in? Yeah, hi. You are? Danielle Zetling. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for, for coming to the vote now. And uh, if you don't know how to do it, Terry will show you. I guess we get you a ballot. There you go. And just uh, fill in the oval adjacent to the number of the choice of your favorite car. Go to the booth and go ahead and take okay. care of that. And then Thank you. Now, this, this is a secret ballot, so we won't watch you mark number 164. It is a secret ballot, as I said. Very carefully, do not go outside the lines, otherwise it may spoil the ballot. Going right into the machine. Oh, it didn't get kicked out. It is an official talent. And we are now, it says, the uh, counted ballot. Good deal. Very interesting car here today. I'm going to have to read it. A, his name is Gregory. Gre Gregory, tell us about your Micros. This is the 1960 made in Poland micro car called Micros, something micro. Uh, in the late 50s and uh, early 60s, Poland was under control of Soviet Union, and Polish designers designed this vehicle uh, without uh, Russians' permission. So after uh, production of 1728 cars the Russian government say no and the production was cut out all documentation and the other parts of vehicle was destroyed and this uh, Micros is the only one in the USA one of 10th still exists uh, in in the world I brought this vehicle in year 2000 uh, on the plane uh, Boeing 767 Polish Airlines Where did you get it? I got it in Poland. Uh, I am, over? Right. I am, I am from the city where the car was produced, Mielec, in southeastern part of Poland. Uh, the car was produced in aircraft factory. means that uh, all the parts and the materials are very durable. Well, where do you get parts today to fix any of these replacements? Right. Because I do have another one in my native city in Poland. And uh, the car was produced in the, the city where the car was uh, in the Mielec. Uh, I still have the bunch of parts. In effect, I don't need a, the, the spare parts because car right car uh, works very well. Uh, this year I made a thousand kilometers up up today. Is that the original color? Yes, it, it's it's a two ton color. W w was just few of the vehicle was produced for the the, the export for the show. Usually it was the one ton uh, color. But this is the last uh, year of production, 1960, means that uh, in the rear I have the signal lights. In 1960, Poland, uh, Polish rules uh, changed that vehicle must have the signal lights. 
So this is the one of the last one produced ever. Well, make sure you get the Polish flag. Oh, I'm very proud of, of my flag and, and the vehicle. Once again, it's only one in the USA. Uh, We're get... here to see it today. Oh, thank you very much thank for you. invitation. Thanks for showing it to us. Thank you. We're here today with two of the guys who are the undermining strengths behind the restoration project of the Lake Bluff ice truck. There's a big story to tell, but I think most of us here at the auto show want to know where this truck came from and how it got to where it is. John Tiffany did the mechanical work. Ray Krasik did the uh, public relations, hauling, lifting, shifting, moving, praying. And I think we'll start with Ray to give us a kind of an overview of how this got started. And then John can fill in the detail. Well, I would say about three years ago, uh, Kathy O'Hare, who was on the board of the uh, museum, um, stopped me uh, and asked if I would uh, go with her to uh, see a, a truck and she uh, said that uh, a gentleman uh, in DeKalb, uh, a grandson of the uh, person who had a ice company uh, in Lake Bluff delivering ice in the 40s, uh, the grandson said he had the truck uh, in his garage and uh, was willing to uh, donate it to the museum as he was uh, getting ready to go out west. So, what would the truck look like when he wanted to donate it? Well, we went to the garage and uh, fortunately it was inside, so it wasn't a rust bucket. And uh, it was uh, uh, a part, somewhat a part. It looked like somebody attempted to restore it. And, uh, but it was restorable and I told Kathy I thought it had uh, enough there to uh, uh, make it worthwhile to do the job. To do the job. It was a big job, and I'm going to switch over to the guy that actually did the restoration, John Tiffany. John, when we brought the, this rust bucket in and you took a look at it, what did you think about restoring it? Well, it, it, everything was there, and uh, it looked like it was you know, <laughs> not too bad a shape. It was uh, nothing was rusted through, so it, was, you know, it looked like it was easily possible to, to restore the thing. So. Uh, you know, a little bit of sandblasting and uh, finding the parts for it and uh, getting people to help sandblast and prime and paint the thing. Uh, it's, it's coming together. You, you mentioned the parts. Where do you get all the parts for a truck from 1931? Well, you, you go on the internet, you look all, you find people all over the United States. I, I found a guy in Washington that sold a bunch of them to another guy. He gave me that contact. I, uh, a guy named, uh, uh, Tom Russell in Idaho, and he actually sent me a bunch of parts, and uh, I told him the story behind the truck, and uh, he actually donated some of the parts for it. Uh, uh, you know, I offered to pay for the shipping and stuff, and he just uh, wanted to be part of it. So. Where, where'd you get the engine? I see it looks like a beautiful uh, Marshall Field Green. <laughs> yeah, the, the paint actually is a Model A Ford, and Don Fiore donated the paint for that, but the engine came from uh, Indiana, Wolcott, Indiana. Uh, it was actually off of a, uh, a power unit that people would use out in the field to run a conveyor or something off. It had a little PTO on a, for a belt-driven thing, and uh, but all we wanted was the engine, so uh, it just worked out that that was the one we needed, and we got it uh, some machine work done on it, put it back together, and it seems to run fine now. It doesn't look like it runs very far, but Ray, what does it need to have done to get it ready? Well, we need to do the uh, body work, the, the uh, metal work for it, and then uh, once we get that finished, um, uh, we'll need to do redo the bed. So you guys going to have this thing running by this show next year? Absolutely. Absolutely, you got it here. Show that camera over here. Come on, cameraman. And he's what is he off at the food tent? <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> it's got duct tape on it. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck, for filming this for us. Dip 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 dooty dow but up be too barada. Dip 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 dooty dow but up be too barada. Dip 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 dooty dow but up be too barada. Dip 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 dooty dow but up be too barada.
dip 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 dooty dow but oop be too bad out of dip 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 dooty dow but oop be too bad out of dip 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 dooty dow but oop be too bad out of dip 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 dooty dow but oop be too bad out of dip 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 Looking at a car earlier that needs uh, preservation, and here's a guy that has a booth that talks about preservation. Uh, your name is? Uh, Dave Naraki. And Dave, you're with? Demostra.com. And Demostra.com does what? We curate private car collections. So we photograph cars, we scan and digitize documentation, and then we work with the owner and uh, write up a narrative about the story and the history behind the car. How do you get the story? The, the how do you get the story, the narrative, and the history? Well, I basically interview the owner, and the owner owners typically have that information, so uh, they're happy to share that. So then I take all that information and publish it on my website. And you offer prints and have a booklet that comes out as well as yeah, a website? We can, do, we can do all kinds of stuff uh, with the photography. We can create big banners and posters. Uh, also, if you have your own photograph, uh, we can convert that into a big banner, and I print all the stuff myself. Okay, we've just walked away from the preservationists, and here's a well-preserved car. This is Wynn Gould, and Wynn's going to tell us about his MG. Wynn? Okay, this is a 1947 MGTC. Uh, it was uh, one of about 2,300 manufactured that year. How many came to, sh to Chicago? How many came to the United States? Quite a few. 2,300? No, not all 2,300, but a much smaller number than that. But an awful lot of the servicemen, particularly the airmen stationed over in England, saw these and thought they were great and brought them back home with them. How did you get this one? I have loved this. I saw my first one in the late 1940s up in the Adirondacks. And, uh, you, here. No, you move over there so we can get the, the camera can take, take a look at it. We wanted, we wanted to show the interior here. Wynn and I are still talking about the servicemen. No, I saw my first one in the late late 1940s at a summer camp up in the Adirondacks in New York State, and I thought that was just the neatest thing I had ever seen. And I always wanted one. And, uh, it took a lot of years to get one. Where'd you get this one? I bought this one from a fellow down in Springfield who had two of them. He was uh, being transferred, and he needed to get his car collection cut down. You had a driving car and a parts car? No, actually, he had two driving MGs. And you have one of the two or both? Got one of the no, just one of them. Where do you keep it? I keep it in the garage. Uh, my regular everyday driver sits out. Cadillac, Lou sits in the driver. It's not quite a Cadillac, but it does sit out all day. Is it the black car with the pink sign on the side? No, that's my wife's car. She gets to park her car in the garage with this. But I. Uh, How many miles does this have? I have no idea. The uh, odometer has passed 100,000. So I don't know how accurate that is or what changes were made. I have not put that many miles on because I have done an awful lot of work on there. Who helped you with the restoration? Uh, basically, I have a good friend who does MGs. He helped me with the, the rebuilding of the engine, everything else I've done myself. When I bought it, the body work had been done and the upholstery had been done. What I've done, I've uh, put new brakes in it, I've put new, two new wiring harnesses in it, new exhaust system. A lot of other things. Uh, I've had the car since 2002, and I've been working on it pretty much continuously ever since. But that's part of the fun. Is this the original color? No, the original color we think uh, was a, a uh, what they call a, a sequoia cream, which would have been much lighter, much closer to white than this. Uh, I've stripped enough paint off the car, so I, I really can't find an original. Can't tell. Place. You can't tell. Well, I was it no, no, don't ask, don't tell? I guess so. <laughs> Wynn, thank you very much. It's all right. Thank you, Tom. We're looking for the owner of this blue uh, Thunderbird, I guess, and this gentleman that's pushing in next to me must be uh, the guy, George. Is that your name? Yes, George is my name. George Esplin? Esplin, correct. And you're with Rotary? I'm with Rotary and I've been now for my 10th year. And is this car yours? Yes, this car is mine. What is it we're looking at? A 1968 Thunderbird Landau. And, uh, no, no, this is the first year they didn't make a convertible, so they made this particular model to look like a convertible. And it's 
certainly does. What's inside? Air conditioning? Air conditioning, 8-track player, uh, power windows in the back. There are wraparound seats, which are distinctive. And, uh, Is all this original? It's all original. I think it was painted once in the 70s. Where did you get it? I got it at Volo Auto Museum. Volo? Yes, They're Volo Auto. Yes, they are here today. And it's got a 429 Thunderjet uh, engine in it with uh, at least 360 horsepower because they said that they stated it at that rate, but the uh, insurance, they kept it at 360 and didn't say what it really was. Well, George, with all that power, how often do you use this car? I use it uh, quite frequently during the week and then on the weekends. Do I see it at the Lake Forest Club occasionally? Yes, you will see it at the Lake Forest Club, only during the summer when it's not raining, though. <laughs> what did you have to do to bring it to this peak of perfection? Actually, uh, it was the last detail. When they saw it, I stored it there one year, and they said it was beginning to oxidize. And they said, let us do some work on it while it's stored here over the winter. They'll do a clay bar treatment as well as do uh, wet sanding. And they said, when you see it, there will be a huge difference. Was there? And there was a tremendous difference because when I'd wax it prior to them doing it, I could never get it real smooth. And now when I wax it, it's very, very smooth. What does the clay bar do? It pulls out any uh, dirt and grime that's embedded within the paint. And I don't know how to do that, but they certainly did a great job. Now, George, you're uh, an expert. Uh, what would you tell our viewers about acquiring and maintaining an antique, classic, or collectible car? Uh, number one, take a long time to make sure that you're getting something you really want. And then, like anything else, you can put a lot of money into a car. And you have to know when to stop doing that unless you want to get it to a perfect condition. And that's from an investment counselor. Now you know, so thank you very much, George. Thank you very much, Tom. Looks like summer fruit here, huh? Oh, yeah. Little watermelon. Good stuff. Why don't we interview these guys, Chuck? Here you go. What's your name? Uh, I'm Ben Kiernan. And what are you doing here today if it isn't obvious? Oh, uh, well, I'm volunteering for this special event. You're where? A student at? Uh, Lake Forest High School. And what do you get? Why are you volunteering today? Oh, uh, because uh, I, lo I love my community. Community <laughs> service. Who's this guy sniggering over here? What's your name? Paul McCreen. Paul, are you also a laughable volunteer? Yes, I am. And where volunteer. do you go to school? Lake Forest High School. And is this part of Kathy O'Hara's yep. cadre? Yes, it is. Thanks for being yep. here. Yeah, thank you. One of the great things about the show is you see a whole variety of vehicles. We've got a 1932, I used to call him a hot rod. This is called a Roadster, based on a Ford. And uh, looks like it's in great shape. It obviously was not an original car, but has been redone uh, in a very fanciful way. And we've been moving down the line here. I have no idea what's coming up next, but that's part of the fun of the show. We have a 1936 Mercedes-Benz Sport Convertible, model 500K. Beautiful, beautiful, deep. I don't know what color this is, almost purple, but uh, iridescent uh, purple, grape color. It's just, just beautiful stuff. Of course, the chrome is highly shined. And we'll go next door. And you don't see these every day. An Auburn 1936 Speedster, and obviously a convertible. Supercharged, it says on the side. Again, a beautiful, beautiful deep blue color. Love the exhaust coming out of the, the engine too, those four pipes. Just a classic. And that's what the show is all about. Classic cars shown in a classic way. What do they call this, Tom? A fishtail, is that right? Nod your head. Boat tail. I knew it had some sort of tail to it. And you can see why. Well, we're over here in the uh, very popular Shady Food Tent. We've got Chris Webb. Chris is standing behind me. Maybe he'll say something. Chris, can you, can you tell us why we're here and what's going on? Well, we're here to, you know, to uh, raise money for the Rotary Club here in Lake Forest Lake Bluff. Have the, all these beautiful antique cars here because we're uh, raising money to do good in the community, give back to uh, organizations and people in need, help them out. Will this benefit everybody? Absolutely. Good, thank you. Chris is, Chris is the president of Rotary, and he set this up. 
So take a look around. It looks like everybody's having a good time with the drummer. And around your Most of the guys that you see back here working are with Rotary. They've got volunteers coming in from the high school to help out. It's a big popular tent, and all the money goes to help community prob solve community problems. And watch out for that. Oh, there we go. Guess I'm moving further, further down on 